autofocus controversy. I'm gonna try to figure this out. I'm gonna try and enjoy one of the last days of this Texas winter with the top down. It's also Friday, and this is the day of the week where I talk more in general terms of creativity, and I want to address a subject this week based on a question I had about patience and persistence. So it is Friday and I have a question that I want to address and it looks like I got another one in the mail. I think this is really cool when people do handwritten letters for some of these questions. It's very personal, I like that. Oh, by the way, um, I mentioned in the last video where I was talking about the GH5, there's been a lot of controversy over the accuracy of the autofocus. I finally figured a way to get it to lock in exactly and never drift. And it's kind of cool and you know, there's just one little button up here. I can't believe I didn't know this before. So once you're in focus, all you have to do is hit this button on the side and your drifting problems are solved. You just can't move, that's the only deal. This is a postcard I got in the mail today. I don't know if you recognize this guy or not. This is my friend Daniel Duarte. Daniel is somebody that I met several years ago just through this show. He was somebody who watched the show. Uh, we would email back and forth every now and then. Daniel is a wonderful guy and he's a great photographer. And about the time I quit my job to do this show full time, and I believe that was 2014-ish or so, he had sent me several emails and we were talking about um, the importance of pursuing an advanced degree and he really wanted to do a master's in photography. And he enrolled and got accepted to the Massachusetts College of Art and Design, also known as MassArt. This right here is an invitation, <laughs> this is really cool, to his thesis exhibition. This means Daniel is about to get his master's in photography. The exhibition dates April 20th through May 10th. There's a reception on April 20th. The gallery talk, ooh, that might be cool, is April 22nd. Unfortunately, I am nowhere near Boston. I would really love to go to this too. This is really awesome. Daniel, if you are watching this, I am so outrageously proud of you. It is unbelievable. Daniel is somebody who was really serious about photography, wanted to do large format film, got into everything, packed his bags, sold a bunch of stuff because going to school is expensive. He really wanted to do this. Went to Mass Art, studied with Abelard or Morel and Nick Nixon, and he's done so well. And it's really cool to see somebody who was just kind of this guy who liked to take photographs that happened to watch the show. We ended up talking and look at what he's doing. So this is awesome. Daniel, congratulations. This is amazing. Okay, I have something really cool that I want to share with you guys. Um, I got an email about a week ago from this kid named Rory Marion. Rory is 13, he lives in Portland, Oregon, and he was reaching out saying he liked the videos and all this, and he had started his own YouTube channel and had a video he wanted me to see. And I went and checked it out, and it's about f-stops. He has a YouTube channel called Cinematography Today, and I will link both of these up in the show description. I watched this video and it's interesting because I think that everybody, when they start a YouTube channel, you know, you go through the basics. So you cover like aperture, shutter speed, what ISO is, all that stuff. Everybody does it. And this kid is better than most adults that I know. In fact, even some of the big channels can't like tell a story and teach something like this. I thought this was really cool. And Rory, thank you for reaching out. You guys head over and give Rory some love. Give him a thumbs up and subscribe to his channel. He's really good. Another question, this is the one that's typed up and was sent to me in the mail. This is from Preston Hens. Hennis, I'm not sure how to pronounce your last name. Anyway, he writes, hi Ted, really love the show and wanted to write in about a question that has been on my mind recently. I have been taking pictures for a while and only in the past few months have I started trying to develop as a photographer. As someone who is for the most part just starting out, I feel that feedback is essential. I have reached out to a lot of my friends and have received mostly constructive feedback. To that point, I have also received feedback that I don't agree with but can't put my finger on why. And I was curious to ask you how to know when to trust your instincts, even when you can't rely on experience. Thanks for everything, Preston. Preston, um, that's a very legitimate question. I think that is something that everybody deals with. I think really not just in the beginning, but your entire career. And it's interesting because the question I planned on getting to today that came to me in an email is very similar. And a lot of this stuff, when you make the decision and you choose that you're going to create, you're going to live a creative lifestyle, that's a big deal. And the problem is, is that 
we tend to doubt ourselves from time to time. And you kind of answer your own question in here because you said the point that you've received feedback that you don't agree with on your images and you were curious as to know when to trust your instincts. And I will be perfectly honest, you always, always have to trust your own instincts. That's a hard thing to do. And I know that sometimes we doubt what we're doing and this is gonna come into play in the next question that I'm gonna answer as well. But it is important that, you know, especially when you're receiving feedback or advice from people, you're going to get advice your entire creative life, and some of which is going to be useful and beneficial, and some of which is not. And it is only up to you to discern which is which. That's what's gonna make you, you. There's really no trick to knowing when to believe something or what's right. A lot of it is gut instinct. I think really what it comes down to is you have to figure out what kind of path you're on. What is it that you want to do? What kind of work do you want to create? It's a really tough question because it's creative, so it's gonna be very subjective. And then things that keep you on that path or keep you interested are the right answers. And if anything is trying to veer you from that path or you don't trust it or it's not interesting, simply that's not it. And I think everything's worth considering, obviously. I mean, sometimes you don't understand something because you haven't gone through that experience yet, but then even then that experience will show you the same thing. So anyway, that is you know my answer to that. I think that getting feedback is essential and I think it is really important. And like my friend Daniel, who went to get his master's degree, that is what he wanted to pursue and the way he wanted to pursue it. And the feedback he wanted to get was the best of the very best in the photography field and that's exactly what he's done. So don't give up, keep at it and uh, yeah, you gotta trust your gut. This next question was sent to me in an email and it reads, Dear Ted, I really enjoy the videos on creativity but I have a question that has been bothering me. Sometimes I get frustrated with my progress and the images that I post. I have some photographers that I look up to and even talk with some of them on social media. It seems like everything they post is amazing and I really struggle with the images that I produce. Is frustration a bad thing? I feel this might be one thing that is holding me back from just enjoying the process. Thank you, Matthias Jensen. Matthias, this is an excellent question, and I think that it's fair to say that anybody who deals with some kind of creative work has to put up with frustration from time to time. I get frustrated with things that I do. I get frustrated with my own progress. I think everybody does, and I think that's totally normal. In fact, I think that if you're not frustrated, I mean, that's kind of part of the drive that keeps you going and pushes you further and, and makes you try harder. I don't think frustration is a bad thing at all. Now, I do know that sometimes when a lot of frustration mounts, it does become difficult to enjoy things. Believe me, I, from personal experience, can share that with you. But I don't think it's the frustration um, that is the problem. And I remember a friend of mine years ago, and I believe he was quoting Woody Guthrie on this, and I should have looked that up. But he said that frustration or anger is not the enemy. Cynicism is. And I think that that is probably where a more proper line is drawn. Because when you become cynical about something, something about you maybe has given up at that point. So I think frustration is okay, and it is important to keep that healthy and keep it in check, and it is important to enjoy the process. But let me offer this to you also, because I think this is at the crux of, you know, on Fridays when I kind of do these creative talks, I think this is an interesting conversation to have. There's good comments that come in on these, and I think it's really interesting for everybody to kind of come together and talk about some of their own dealings with this kind of thing. And I think that one of the things this comes down to is patience and perseverance. And patience is a key term because things don't happen overnight. There is a wide spectrum of people in this world and different personality types and different talent levels for certain things. And, you know, one thing I can tell you is like, you know, from my music school days in college to what I do with photography, even to what I do on YouTube now, there is always somebody who is better than you. There's always several people that are really good and they're always better. And it seems when you look at their output that it really comes easy for them. They're just very natural with it. And that is normal, but what you're not seeing with that is all the hard work that got put into it, especially if you're talking about social media, you're just seeing the post in the end. So that's important to remember, but everybody kind of has their own path with it that they take. And not only are there people who are better than you, there are people that are not on your level that are trying to work hard too, and you're in the middle somewhere. That's just always how it is. That's always how that continuum works. And so it's important to take that in stride and enjoy that as part of the, the process. But I think one of the things that very few people talk about in the world at all is the importance that it is to be patient with things. It takes time to cultivate results of quality. It just does. 
you look at any photographer and you look at some of the big names, some of the people I've even featured on the show with the artist series, people like Keith Carter or Alexei Tedorenko. I mean, those people did not just shoot out and within a couple months have this great body of work and this great career. Alexei has worked on that for years. Um, it's something that he's worked very hard on. It's something that he's pursued. And, and yes, there are photographers out there that just seem to just show up and take over. But for most people, that is not the case. Even somebody like Michael Kenna, who's an amazing photographer, Michael Kenna has spent years, he spent 10 years apprenticing with Ruth Bernard and working as her printer before he ever went out on his own. And if you go back and look at his early work, it took a little bit of time to kind of figure out that style he wanted to shoot in. And so there are a lot of work that went into that. And so that's really important to remember, but I think cynicism is what you want to be afraid of, not just frustration. So I hope this helps you guys. And if you guys have any thoughts on any of these topics, feel free to leave me a comment below. This is meant to be a discussion about creativity, and I think that's something that's very important. I will also link up to some other videos because I tend to do these on Fridays. It's a good Friday thing to do to kind of like, okay, we've talked about photography. Let's step away from that a little bit and let's jump into the creative process, which brings us back around to photo assignments on Mondays. So I'll link up to some of those videos here at the end of this one. And as always, if you guys have enjoyed this video, please remember to like it, share it, and subscribe to The Art of Photography for more videos. And until the next one, I will see you guys then. Later.